is just fantastic. Captain's Lock, Subdate 210318.9. The Quantum Torpedo Strength is up 23.8%, and with this success I've tasked Tactical to look at the possibilities of blowback from Magog's Anus, who have now reliably informed me we are two weeks away, so I'm going to look into this, air quotes, sorcery, and air quotes, that the Wizard Eunuch uses. Welcome everyone to the exhibition of stupid people. Today we have four subjects I'd like to go through, and to start, we're gonna go- oh, this one bugs me. We're gonna go to the House of Lords, which is the second chamber within the House of Parliament. It's that really antiquated building that nobody can be bothered to repair because it's falling apart, and a bunch of old fuddy-duddies debate remarkably trite things at a slow, slow pace. However, in the wake of the murder of Sarah Everard, which has caused a considerable stir, many debates about updating laws when it comes to DV and crimes against women and children, a peer within the House of Lords, Baroness Jones, made a suggestion, one that has led to many creators producing rather long videos over one sentence. I'm not against people spinning things or spreading it out, but the points are remarkably simple to make so perhaps we'll get to those instead. While speaking in the House of Lords, Baroness Evans said, In the week that Sarah Everard was abducted and we suppose killed, because remains have been found in a woodland in Kent, I argue that at the next opportunity for any bill that is appropriate, I might put an amendment to create a curfew for men on the streets after 6pm. I feel this would make women a lot safer and discrimination of all kinds would be lessened. She is fundamentally wrong. No one would be any safer because she's forgotten one very obvious fact. To be a criminal means to ignore the law in the first place. Also, UK crime statistics do show yes, there is a vast number of women who have been affected and attacked. Yes. But to make them seem larger, you have to ignore all the other crimes being committed against anyone else. It is remarkably intellectually dishonest. And at the moment with coronavirus restrictions, because everyone loves that sheeple crowd control, Yo Swagness, it's not like there are many people out at the moment after 6pm anyway because there's nothing for them to do. Just insert it into the Coronavirus Act and never bother with those vaccines. And I'll air quotes around the word vaccine if you don't care for them at all. So would a 6pm curfew make women any safer? No. Also, I'm not overly fond of politicians politicizing a murder to push an agenda. Please don't do that. It is incredibly disrespectful to the person who is no longer with us. And the arguments in Parliament have all been used to frame a particular argument but without saying the argument which has led to these rather long videos. The victims of the crimes are women and black boys. Do I need to finish that, or should we move on to the next subject? We're going to move on to the next subject, okay. It's just better for all of us. For our next subject, we are going to go to the New York Post. To defeat woke tyrants, the rest of us must treat them like the monsters they are. Most Americans hate woke politics, and most minorities don't share woke priorities. Indeed, according to the pollster David Shaw, woke excesses are causing black voters to flee the Democratic Party, despite endless charges of racism. Former President Trump took the biggest share of minority voters of any Republican in my lifetime. Woke tyrants ride high. According to Cato YouGov poll, 62% of Americans self-censor their political expression. I'm going to skip a little because I'm not reading all of this. It's happening not just because anybody voted for it, but because a small but determined and vicious minority is bullying people to go along, relying on cowardice and groupthink to achieve ends that can never happen via majority vote. How do you think Dr. Zeus would have done in a referendum? With the reference of Dr. Seuss and Pepe Le Pew, I now draw attention to last week's I believe this week at Twitter, where I spoke about the cancellation of Pepe Le Pew from Space Jam 2, and, by extension, Speedy Gonzales. I don't care for cancellation. I also don't care for the disclaimer alerts that some streaming services provide for certain shows that don't fit in with the core values. That all said, 
I don't think you should treat someone who is a, a quote, woke tyrant as a monster. Because if you go down to their level, they will take the level and reduce it even further. Because people like that aren't interested in being your equal. They want to be better than you. And I think that only leads to more pain and more anger, more division. Be better than them, be magnanimous in victory and defeat. Also, this is obviously a reference to the fact that Biden, still in Washington DC this is, has a wall up around Capitol Hill. Right. Um, many have suggested moving that south because of the issues going on down there, and I'm not going to be drawn in on that rather amusing video where it looks like his hand is on a green screen. And I say looks like, you've got to admit that looks really dodgy. I'm not going to be drawn in. The guy still hasn't done a proper press conference and answered any actual questions. It's astonishing. So I can fully understand why this article was also a bit of a shot at him. To move on from that in a completely different direction, but we might come back to politics for the final one, we're going to go to two videos. This is the first one. If you can't afford to f***ing subscribe to my channel, f leave. I f***ing hate you guys. Stop sending one bit. If you can't afford to subscribe, f***ing leave. You can't afford my channel. They're disgusting. I'm sorry if they're f***ing disgusting and they can't afford more than one dollar. Them. Okay, I had to censor that a bit. That is Cat's Play. Yesterday I watched one of her three hour streams, so I could get a bit of a gauge for who she is. My view, based on other clips I saw of her, this one being the best one. Uh, thank you for answering my question. I don't know where to start. Your streams are great and funny personality. Um, you, I didn't start my Twitch channel to be commemorated on my personality. I came here to be complimented on my boobs. And if you guys don't f***ing start complimenting my body right now that I am selling on the internet for views, this is my marketing plan. You guys have to f***ing leave. Is that she is a character like Casey Tron, a very good character because she's managed to get under everyone's skin. I personally take no offense with anyone trying to make money. I also don't care if they want to say, if you've got time to watch, you've got time to subscribe. I'm going to point and say you're a terrible person, yes, but in the context of this streamer, I don't think she means it, I think she's a po. I could be the only one that thinks that. Others have dubbed her the most real streamer, the most honest streamer. I think the moment she said, I want compliments on my boobs, yeah, she was pretty much guaranteeing she's a troll. But a funny one, I watched three hours of her, she just talks. So to our final subject. Oh, this one annoys me. This one annoys me because I was around during Gamergate. I was there then. There were some very prominent figures during Gamergate, like when journalists and officials had a uh, conference on Gamergate to define it. One of the more prominent names there was Milo Yiannopoulos. I remember when there was a bomb threat there. People were there streaming on Periscope to Twitter. He'd gone off to get people water because it was freaking hot. He was a prominent name. Now, over the years, his relevance, let's go with that, has gone down because he didn't really stay consistent. He kind of went more in a direction and in doing so alienated himself from a lot of his former supporters. Had a decent channel, had a decent Twitter, lost that. He had a prominent voice and he was a very big voice. Milo recently came out as ex-gay last week. Now, I don't care if his sexuality, it means nothing to me at all. When people called him racist and he married a black man, that was funny. I guess, much like yesterday with Bill Burr, Milo Yiannopoulos had a sex servant. The part that's really interesting about him coming out as ex-gay is that he is planning to launch a reparative therapy clinic. Interestingly, this does explain why the UK government earlier in this week said it would bring forward legislation to ban gay conversion therapy, which is what reparative therapy clinic means. Being quoted as saying, ex-gay is a silly expression, but it has the virtues of slotting into a print headline neatly and absolutely enraging the opposition. Celibacy is a modest and achievable middle-term goal. Naturally, in the end, my aspiration would be to take it all the way. 
He also followed this up by pointing out that he'd gone through a Christian renaissance and that in the US especially, there is a resurgence of religious social conservatism. Not going to be drawn in on that, just want to point at the whole gay conversion therapy aspect and be like, fam, what? <laughs> that's, that's not going to do Republicans any favours at all. And just because there are people already willing to sign up because it's got your name and face on it, doesn't mean it's a good thing. Milo, what are you doing? As we're done, I want to know what you all think. Please do let me know what you think the stupidest thing of the week is. I hope you all have a fantastic Thursday. Thank you all very much for listening.